Okay. Today, let us discuss uh, about meninges. These are the outlines of the presentation. We have an introduction. We have uh, an etiology. Then we see the pathogenesis of uh, meningitis and the management of meningitis. After that, we see the prognosis of meningitis. These are the objectives. At the end of the seminar, the participants will be able to define what's meningitis uh, and list the etiology of meningitis and describe the clinical features of uh, meningitis and uh, understand the management of meningitis, list complications of meningitis and uh, the participant will be understand the prognosis of uh, meningitis. So when we come to the definition of meningitis, uh, meningitis uh, refers to this is an inflammation of the membranous covering of the brain and spinal cord. Uh, so you know the meninges have three layers. Uh, these are known as the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. These are the layers of the meninges. When these meninges, when these layers are inflamed uh, due to many uh, microbes or other mechanisms, it is known as uh, uh, meningitis. So this uh, uh, membranes have uh, three functions. Uh, the first function is uh, provide uh, the supportive support uh, as a framework, and the second is uh, tax as uh, uh, protects from the mechanical damage, the brain is or the sinus protected by the uh, meninges which are filled from the mechanical uh, damage or shrinkage. So these are the two most common functions of the meninges. This is a diagrammatic representation of the meninges. The meninges are the membranous covering of the brain and spinal cord. It covers the brain and spinal cord and it has three layers, the dura mater is the outer layer and the middle layer is known as the arachnoid mater and the inner and the most uh, thinnest part that attached to the brain is known as the pia mater uh, so the pia mater is a delicious, delicate part and the arachnoid, in between arachnoid and dura mater there is a subarachnoid space that's important for the CSF circulation. And the dura matter and the pia matter are vascular, but the arachnoid matter is a vascular and supplied by uh, uh, sort of diffusion. These are the diagrammatic representation of the uh, meninges. At the top, there is a skin from the skin, there is peristium. From the peristium, there is cranium. Under the cranium, there is a meninges that contains these uh, three layers. This is a diagrammatic representation of the uh, meninges plus the CSF circulation and the CSF production, where it's produced and what are the sites of the production for CSF. Uh, it tells us the ventricles. What are the ventricles? and which ventricles are important for the formation of CCF and the CCF is produced from the where the sites, the coronary plexus it produced from different ventricles of the coronary plexus then finally it drains to the uh, capillaries and this is uh, all about the diagrammatic representation so what are the etiologies of meninges? And these uh, etiologies are uh, influenced by the age of the host because uh, the, because the etiology of meninges uh, depends on the age. That means uh, in the neonatal age, in the childhood age, and in the adult age, there are different etiologies that are common. So these etiologies are uh, different. According to different age groups, the immune cells of host, epidemiology of the pathogen, for example, when we take 
the misery and jealousy is common in menjalpal uh, countries it starts from the chad to the sudan and ethiopia and the other ones underlying risk factor like chronic disease like other uh, spinal bifida or other uh, immunologic uh, disease so when it's the etiology based on the age group uh, from birth to two months the commonest is gps and also gram negative enteric bacillus also common and group D streptococcus and trococcus is the other commonest and uh, listeria monocytogenes are also the other uh, common organisms from the birth to two months of life but from two months to two years of life the commonest etiology is the streptococcus pneumonia and zaria manjats and h influenza type uh, b is the most common etiologies for meningitis but other uh, less common uh, pathogen for meningitis are the staphylococcus aureus salmonella also other less common etiology for the meningitis when you use the risk factors uh, there are different risk factors that are uh, the, the, the mechanisms that aggravate the mechanisms of the uh, inflammation process uh, so the lack of the pre-existing immunity is the most common etiologic most common risk factor and close contact poverty in male sex congenital or acquired csf leak and the spleen dysfunction or asplenia also the risk factors so these are the most risk factors uh, that causes um, meningitis the, when you come to the pathogens of meningitis the first one is the colonization and invasion of the pathogen the pathogen colonizes and invades the epithelial layer of the cells especially the mucosa the epithelial mucosa of the cells on the respiratory system so first it colonizes and invades the epithelium after it colonizes the epithelium, it enters to direct enters to the intravascular system, where the pathogens, the pathogens enter to the intravascular system. It can survive in that system, and it's known as bacteria. Bacteria means the presence of bacteria in the vascular system or in the blood. It's known as bacteria. Then after intravascular survival they enter to the meninges meningeal invasions the meninges is invaded by bacteria due to many processes that leads to bacteria multiplying within the csf finally it's determined by the host and the inflammatory response that means uh, once the bacteria once the bacteria enters to the meninges due to different mechanisms one is from the hematogenous spread the other is from the direct trauma and the other is from the surrounding structures that are infected by bacteria this process leads to bacteria in the csf bacteria are more produced uh, in the csf than the serum blood why because because the immunity is a complement system of the CSF is less than that of, than that of uh, serum so bacteria can easily multiply in the CSF than in the serum finally it, it results what the disease depending on the host immune the host inflammatory response that means the host response and the pathogen responses the main factor to progress the disease or to halt the disease this is the pathogenesis of when you come to the clinical manifestation there are different clinical manifestations depending on the age for example in neonatal age proofreading uh, fever projectile vomiting 
altar de Dios, con Jesús, con Belchín, Belchín, Fontán, el Sáz, con 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 Presentation. The classic trail. So, back trail means fever, headache, and neck stiffness. These are known as the trails of the bacterial meninges. When it comes to physical examination, mm. the examination should evaluate the following systems: focal neurological, sinus, sign of meningitis, irritation, systemic and extracranial finding, and the level of consciousness should be assessed for a patient or a child present with a sinus symptom of meningitis. So that means we assess any focal neurological deficits like weakness, bladder incontinency, and other neurologic findings must be evaluated. And, and the sign of meningeal irritation is like nuchal rigidity, and the other one is a bruising sign, and kind of sign should be assessed and documented. And well evaluated, the other one systemic examination that means from head to toe. We must examine the patient who present the science in terms of the meninges, final level of consciousness, because meninges can cause many complications and complications like coma, so level of consciousness must be assessed and documented. These are the investigation modalities for a child presented with meninges. CBC, RBS, blood field, blood culture, chest x ray, CT scan, MRI must be done. These are the cerebral spinal fluid uh, finding in CNS disorder. There is normal range and the normal range, and we can differentiate by whether, whether the bacteria or uh, and bacteria by this, uh, binding the pressure glycoside protein glucose we can determine whether it is meningitis due to the viral etiology or due to the bacterial etiology we can take the sample from the cf serum spinal cord and we can uh, make it uh, whether it is uh, due to which organisms but there are uh, contraindications for uh, lp there are some contraindications. The first one is uh, limit racing. Is one contraindication for uh, ICP for uh, not doing LP. Severe respiratory di distress that uh, compromises the respiratory system. Uh, so we must postpone the LP uh, for stabilization and infection over the underlying skin and thrombocytopenia and are the uh, most contraindications to do LP. Uh, there are differential diagnoses for a uh, child present with sinus in terms of meningitis. It can be aseptic meningitis, uh, it can be viral meningocephalitis, it can be tuberculosis, it can be cerebral malaria, it can be severe uh, sepsis or brain abscess. Uh, it can be other uh, differentials beyond the pyogenic meningitis. These are the management principles of meningitis. When a child present with uh, meningitis, these are the patterns of means how we manage first uh, we assure of the adequate of ventilation and cardiac ventilation that is abc of life must be supported after we support abc of life of the patient we obtain appropriate laboratory studies that we have discussed before then we establish of the uh, venous access after establishing of the venous access we must administer fluids as necessary uh, and uh, finally, when then after administration of the fluid, we must administration of dexamethasone. After dexamethasone administration, we start in empirical antibiotics. After we taking up LDP, if they don't contraindicate, we take LDP. Then we do, uh, we do, we do, 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 we do, we must uh, start the empirical antibiotics. After we treat, so after we start the empirical uh, antibiotic, we also treat uh, hypoglycemia if present and. Uh, uh, we must control also fever. If fever, we must uh, control that fever. Fever. So the LP uh, is not uh, is not necessary to start the antibiotics because antibiotics can be started without LP as empirical.
So the management principle is can be supportive, supportive like very frequent endurance assessment, uh, patients with endurance sign chart. We can follow the patient with endurance sign charts and comma care, seizure control. So these are the supportive management. This when we have the antibiotic management, it's, uh, it's depend on the etiologic uh, agent, uh, but there are two general principles of antibiotic therapy for bacterial meningitis. There are two general principles. The first one is the antibiotics should be bactericidal agents, and the antibiotic should be penetrates and pass the blood brain barrier to reach sufficient concentration in the cells. These are the two principles to start antibiotics for bacteria meningitis. The organism casing bacteria meningitis is uh, known to outset, so the empirical treatment should be started uh, as uh, I said. So from this, uh, 25 to 50% of the streptococcus are resistant to penicillin and up to 25% are resistant to toxin and uh, ceftriaxel. Most of the meningitis are resistant to penicillin and uh, cephalosporin. 30 to 40% of uh, hemoglobin influenza type B uh, produce beta lactane. So depending on the organisms, we can administer the drugs. Uh, the most common drugs are available: bacomycin, cefatoxin, and ceftriaxel are uh, the best available drugs. Even though there, crystalline penicillin chloramphenicol can be used. If the uh, patient is immunocompromised and suspect the gram negative, we can give also ceftazidine and aminoglycoside may be uh, added. And the uh, treatment step is the treatment start so on duration uh, for based on the uh, etiological agent. For example, for meningococcal meningitis, it is enough to five to seven days, and H influenza is enough to seven to ten days, and for pneumococcal meningitis, ten to forty and forty to twenty one days for L monocytogens. Uh, and the gram negatives are also treated at least uh, three weeks. So the other one is the issue of corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are important for the management of uh, bacterial meningitis because of during the startment of the, uh, the antibiotics, there is lice of cells, that lice of cells leads to the inflammatory cascade. This inflammatory cascade leads to uh, further uh, compromisation and further sign and symptoms to prevent disease. We can use corticosteroids, but corticosteroids are administered, uh, administered uh, before. Um, the starting of antibiotics at 12 or 30 minutes uh, must be uh, delayed. Uh, so the dexamethasone is the best drug to do to, uh, from the corticosteroids. We can administer for uh, two days. The other one is the complication of meningitis. Meningitis have its own acute complication. Complication is the acute complication is the seizure, anemia, DIC, thrombocytosis, and subdural fusion and cerebritis, uh, thrombosis of the dural venous sinus can be the acute complications. The chronic complications can be mental retardation, recurrent seizure, visual impairment, behavioral change, and hearing loss can be the other uh, chronic complications. When it is a uh, prognosis of the meningitis, uh, mortality is less than 10% with antibiotic therapy and uh, supportive care. Severe neurodevelopmental sequel can be 10 to 20 percent, and that's zero behavioral morbidity, maybe around 550 percent of cases. And there are uh, some prognosis, some uh, poor prognostic factors for uh, a child who has uh, meningitis. So, pneumococcal meningitis is one of the poor prognostic factors for meningitis, and age less than six months is other uh, poor prognostic factors. and. Uh, Colony forming immunities if it is greater than 10 to the power of 6, also is one. And seizure occurring after 4 days of therapy, also a poor prognosis factor. And the other poor prognosis factor for bacterial meningitis, coma or focal neurological uh, signs on presentation. These are the poor prognostic uh, factors for uh, child present with meningitis. So the prevention mechanisms. The prevention mechanisms there are universal precautions. The universal precautions means starting from the hand washing up to the environmental control. The universal precaution is one of the important methods to prevent the uh, presentation or the disease of the meningitis. The other one is chemoprophylaxis, and the other one is vaccinations. When you say chemoprophylaxis, it is depend on the agents. Uh, most uh, uh, Refampsin is the most common drug that we use for uh, gas chemoprocrus and vaccinations as, uh, as, as, as we discussed. 
So after the patients presented meningitis, uh, meningitis patients have its follow up. So since neuronal deafness is the most common uh, presentation after meningitis, so we are entering assessment in all children with, within um, one month after discharge from the hospital. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, indications for. Uh, uh, in summary, uh, bacterial meningitis an acute and uh, it is a diffusely bacterial infection of the CNS with the primary involvement of the meninges. Proper pretreatment evaluation and workup is uh, essential. The organisms uh, causing bacterial meningitis sold them known uh, as uh, offset. Uh, so, so uh, in summary, these are the recommendations. So neuroscience charts must be available as needed and imaging must be every department should have the imaging. Uh, is as a reference of the uh, similar presentation. Uh, and thank you. Uh, have a nice time.